Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, February 12th, 2018, episode 25. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, of course, maybe a little lulls. Today's show is titled, Built Ford Statist Bigly. On this show, well, first let me remind you that you can get show notes at, show notes at isheadlines.com. You can also get the show notes through a link, which is in the Facebook description as well as the YouTube description, depending on where you're watching this. And if you'd like an audio version, that is embedded in the show notes page, or it will be in due time. And it will also eventually show up in iTunes. And if you do a search for iState in iTunes, you will find uh, both this show headlines you may have missed as well as is daily. So on this show... Robo Road Pirates, SCOTUS Union Buster, Afrin Aid, Killer Transgender Ruling, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed. Ford pushes forward with robot cop cars. So if you, if you wanted a reason to stop driving Fords, or at least never buy a new Ford ever again, here's a pretty good one, and this is where we get the title for our show, which is Built Ford Statist. Ford is aggressively working on developing self-driving police cars that could patrol the roads. Looking for booty for police departments in the form of tickets for traffic violations. And any company, for me at least, any company working on developing a robot-driven road pirate is, is worthy of a boycott. And so, to that end, let me say, and I'm, I'm not necessarily that I had in mind in any time in the very near future to purchase a new Ford. Let me just say, if and when that does enter my head, I will immediately dismiss that thought. So, Ford, goodbye. This is an easy boycott for me to carry out. But for those of you who may be thinking about buying a Ford, and, you've, and you're anywhere in the political perspective that I am, I would strongly recommend that you do not enable the, the built Ford statist company. And this story is from patentlyapple.com. I like that. that. I like that. That's a neat. I like it. Uh, that's a neat domain. Looking a little further out, Ford Global Technologies foresees autonomous police vehicles and their patent on this surfaced last month. Our report takes a, pee, a peek at what it's all about. Ford notes in their patent filing background that the advent and continuous development of driver assistance systems enhance and automate the driving process for safety and improved user experience. One example, well, I don't care about the autonomous vehicles per se, uh, but while autonomous vehicles can and will be programmed to obey traffic laws, a human driver can override that programming. Imagine... I don't, I don't, I don't know. See, that's, that's a drawback to autonomous vehicles. They can program to obey traffic laws. Not, not that I'm against, uh, you know, being reckless on the road. But let's be honest, not all traffic laws are really about safety. But I'll leave, I'll leave you debate that. A human dr driver can override that programming to control and operate the vehicle at any time. When a vehicle is under the control of a human driver. There is a possibility of violation of traffic laws. <gasps> Thus, there will still be need, uh, still be a need for police to traffic, and that's where Ford, Ford comes in with its uh, its its robot road pirates, and that's why I'm boycotting them. 
Supreme Court moves towards striking down forced union dues. So it looks like we're getting closer to seeing the end of mandatory fees paid to public sector unions. And if you see the way the state media is writing about this potential, and you can, I have an L L.A. Times example uh, in in the article, you'd think that forcing people to pay fees to belong to an organization they might not necessarily want to belong to was a good and noble act to preserve. Now, <clears throat> let me let me be clear. Allowing people the to freedom to choose what organizations they belong to uh is a good thing um not anti-union that's not my issue my issue is the coercive part of this now what they're saying is that allowing people the freedom to choose what organizations they belong to and thus who gets paid fees that's a bad thing and and actually from from a state media perspective that makes sense after all our, and I'll put that in quotes, our membership in the course of enterprise known as the United States of America is not unfamiliar, and more on that in a moment. So the Supreme Court appears to be leaning heavily towards declaring mandatory public sector union fees uh, that they're a violation of free speech. Now, now maybe it's, I, I don't really care about the, is it a violation of free speech? Uh, is it a violation of free s associations? I don't know. By the my, my laws and my, my bill of rights. But either way, if the public sector unions lose their power to coercively gain and hold on to members, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine by me. And just, and just to remind you, and this is, this is, I said, this is the part where I said, I'm going to get to that later. These are unions that work to empower government employees to get higher pay and benefits that are paid for through taxation, which is a uh, here's the here's the difficult part for you folks to many of you probably listening to this to ponder. It's a form of forced membership dues. But don't tell the Supreme Court that because then they might not be inclined to make this ruling because they don't want to set that dangerous precedent. But don't worry. They're not going to set a dangerous precedent because the people who are going to cheer on this ruling, they're not going to want that precedent to be established. And this is so, so if you listen to the language from the L.A. Times, paying union dues and baking a wedding cake may not seem like classic examples of free speech except perhaps at the supreme court oh no my free associations this year the high court is poised to announce its most significant expansion of the first amendment since the citizens united decision in 2010 which struck down laws that limited campaign spending by corporate corporations blah blah now the, quote, money is speech, unquote, doctrine is back and at the heart of a case to be heard this month that threatens the financial financials, fi financial foundations of public employee unions in 22, quote, blue states, unquote. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Assad brings aid to Afrin fighters against Turk Reich. So it looks like Bashar al-Assad has decided to send aid to Afrin in an effort to stem the Turkish tide into what Assad considers Syrian territory. So the aid is coming in the form of allowing Kurdish fighters safe passage in Syrian-held territory in order to get Afrin to help come to the aid of the fighters resisting the Turk wreck, and if, if I, I did tell you a while back, my my regular listeners, such as they are, that uh, Turk wreck is a thing. It's a you know I've coined the phrase, uh, independent of anybody else coining the phrase before I knew that somebody else coined the phrase. So I'm gonna claim it. I'm not gonna copyright it. I'm gonna bipcot it, so that means anyone can use it, so long as they're not a government entity. Uh, <laughs> but the Turk Reich, this is who they are. And this news is essentially that Assad, uh, he can't directly support them. And one of the reasons he can't directly support them is because one of their strongest allies, Russia, isn't necessarily for supporting them. And that's a whole long conversation that I'm not going to get into in, in the headlines show here. Uh, but this is from Times of Amman. Syria's U.S.-backed Kurds are getting indirect help from an unlikely source in their war against Turkey in the northwest region of Afrin. President Assad. 
of Syria. Pro-government forces and Kurdish-led forces have fought each other elsewhere in Syria and Damascus uh, poses the Kurds' demand for autonomy. But in Afrin, they have a common enemy and a mutual interest in blocking Turkish advances. Turkey, which regards the YPG, that's the Kurdish defense group, as a threat to an its southern border, launched an assault in the region last month. And uh, the seeking to shield Afrin, the Kurds asked Damascus to send forces. They're not doing that, but the government show knows they're not going to do that. But they are providing indirect help by allowing Kurdish fighters, civilians, and politicians to reach Afrin through territory it holds. Representatives of both sides told Reuters. Just gets stickier and stickier and tanglier and tangler or tanglier over in the Middle East, especially surrounding the I'm going to I'm going to call Syria. I'm going to call it the 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 gas pipeline prize. That's essentially what's going on there. Judge rules state must pay for killers transgender treatment. So a federal judge has decided that the people of Missouri should be forced to help pay for transgender treatment for a convicted killer who is currently serving a life sentence. The judge has ruled that the state of Missouri must pay for hormone replacement therapy for Jessica Hicklin, formerly James Hicklin, who was in prison for life after being convicted of killing a man in 1995. This is from the Daily Mail UK. A federal judge has ordered the state of Missouri must provide a transgender killer serving, yes. not a, as, as in a killer who's transgender, not a killer who kills transgenders, serving a life sentence with hormone replacement therapy, hair removal therapy, and access to gender-affirming canteen items. Jessica Hicklin, 38, is a preoperative transgender woman was born James Hicklin and was convicted of fatally shooting a man in 1995 during a drug-related crime in Clinton, Missouri. Federal Judge Noel Collins on Friday granted in part a preliminary injunction sought by Lambda Legal on Hicklin's behalf. Good times. Really good times. It's always great. I don't care what you do with your own body, but uh, I don't want to pay for it. I definitely don't want to pay for it if you, like, if you're le legit a murderer. Catalan Parliament Speaker. I don't I don't want to pay for it. I got to go back to that. I don't want to pay for it, whether you're a killer or not. But the fact that you're a killer, that adds to the insanity that a judge would rule in the way that the judge ruled. But, you know, my laws, I guess. So Catalan Parliament Speaker demands Puigdemont be reinstated as president. The Catalan Parliament is not giving up on having Carle Puigdemont returned as their president. Puigdemont is currently serving in exile in Brussels, facing political arrest if he returns to Catalonia. The Speaker of the Parliament, Roger Turret, that's a weird name. I mean, for for being in Catalonia, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not. You tell me. If, if you live in Catalonia, let me know. Is that a common name? Roger Torrent is not giving up on Puigdemont's return. He's calling for Spain to come to the negotiating table to start the process of returning Puigdemont to Catalonia as their president. So you can read more about that if you go to the show notes. Facebook to give you a thumbs down option. Oh, I love this. I want that thumbs down option. Here's a number of people that I may be connected to in a number of pages that I've been dying to thumb you down. You know who you are. You might soon be able to give the big thumbs down to people on Facebook if rumors reported by TechCrunch are true. Facebook is apparently... I haven't seen it. I feel left out. They're apparently testing the thumbs down option on 5% of Android phone users in the U.S. And apparently those who select uh, the English option. That's me. How is it that I haven't been given this option? I so want to test the thumbs down option. Man, I'm going to go crazy with that thing. I'm going to be going. I'm all up and down on that thumbs down. All up and down on the thumbs down. You know it. Nanocrystals could boost sodium batteries just in time to relieve lithium mining pressures. So a new breakthrough in battery tech could make sodium batteries more competitive with lithium-ion batteries. 
And the breakthrough comes at a time when mining for lithium is increasingly becoming a problem in terms of finding more lithium and in terms of environmental impacts of lithium mining. So two scientists, Min Kyu Song and Yui Lin, have developed a way to use tin oxide nanocrystals to improve the efficiency of a sodium battery. And the technique, though, also could make lithium batteries more efficient as well. So there you go, folks. See, it's it's not all fear and loathing and, and worldtopia such as that is. There's there's good stuff going on out there, and this is this is great news. Save the planet! Dump plastic straws, says Irish Pub Association. I put this in your lols for the day. Here is your lols for the day. And just because it's in the lols for the day doesn't mean I'm like I'm not I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But it just strikes me as funny. The idea of Irish pubs cracking down on plastic straws. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I just picturing the uh the, the the straw police from the Irish pub it's called the the Irish pub global trade trade association i'm i'm picturing the plastic straw police going around catching someone daring to to put a plastic straw in somebody's uh, glass you you hate the world don't you suddenly the irish sound german you know because that's the stereotype uh, uh, you know, of somebody who's authoritarian, of course, they have a German accent. So, I mean, I can't give, I mean, I don't know. Can Five you, can minutes. you picture an, uh, an authoritarian person with an Irish accent? Ah, uh, so you, you, you want to use the plastic, uh, straw there, laddie. You hate the, do you hate the planet? Now, it sounds better with a German accent. And I'm mostly German, so I'm allowed to make fun of them because I am mostly German. So they've asked their members to stop using plastic straws by the end of 2018, and uh, hey, that's great. I I mean, as long as it's voluntary, I don't I don't care. So the Irish Pub Global Trade Association has appealed to its members to cease using plastic straws in a bid to make businesses more environmentally friendly. This is from, by the way, Hospitality Ireland. John Lynch, sales manager at Bioplastic Straw Supplier. Ooh, wonder. I guess he likes it. I bet. Down to Earth Materials commented, "There's been a dramatic increase in uptake of compo um, compostable, compostable or compostable straws in Ireland, especially, especially in the Dublin area. We saw increased demand around two or three months before Christmas because of Blue Planet. Isn't that nice. That's sweet. I like it." There's nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing wrong at all. But it's still funny. It's just funny to imagine the 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 plastic straw police, even though it's kind of voluntary. Let's just say plastic straw police because that's way funnier. The plastic straw police going around to the Irish pubs that have that have signed this agreement, you know, with the the the, the, the leprechaun with the German accent. I mean, let's be totally stereotypical here. Uh, you know, mixing stereotypes together for that authoritarian jack booted straw police guy from the Irish Pub Trade Association. I've, I've left you hopefully with a wonderful visual that'll bring a smile to your face or, or maybe just give you a little gas. Washington State Bill would charge parents for child's crime with gun. And I, I, I don't know if we're going to end up talking about this tonight on Is Daily in the full auto section because we have we have a doozy plan tonight. Uh, Professor Rambo is going to be introducing a new way, well, for him, a new way of looking at the type of uh, bullets that you may want to be using for EDC, that's uh, everyday carry, and for home defense. So if we have time, this is on the docket. A bill in Washington state would penalize parents whose children used a gun in their home to harm others. The bill is setting off a debate even among gun supporters. And this is from TDN.com. Could a bill under consideration in the legislature have saved the life of a Kelso 13-year-old had it been in effect last October? HB 1122 would make it a gross misdemeanor for parents. 
if children use an easily accessible firearm to threaten or injure a person unless it is used in self-defense. The law also would require all firearm dealers to offer to sell or provide a lockbox, trigger lock, or other device that prevents the weapon from firing. No one would be required to purchase them. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. Slippery slope. All right. Well, and we'll go on to our last story here. Human eggs successfully fully grown in lab. Researchers from the UK and the US have come together to successfully test growing a human egg in a lab for the first time. The eggs are grown to the point of being able to be fertilized. Uh, this is from AJC.com. A group of scientists are touting an infertility breakthrough after human eggs have been grown in a lab from their earliest stages to the point of potential fertilization for the first time. And these are researchers working together from One both the minute. UK and the United States that conducted this uh, research. Researchers conducted the research. Recently published their results in the scientific journal Molecular Human Reproduction. A group of science... Okay, I already read that. Research... Okay, wow, really? It repeats the sentences. Okay, so... Be that as it may, you can get more if you go to the show notes and you click on the link for uh, read more at AJC.com. And there's a couple of headlines seconds. that we didn't get to. So we didn't get to price of solar keeps coming down. So the price of solar panels with uh, technological advancements are actually coming down a lot faster than people thought they would. EU hardliner faces rebellion from within over Brexit. Ten seconds. Somali president to meet with Somaliland leader in Djibouti. And basically, no one in the U.S. is getting fined for flying drones without a license. And if you hear that beep, I think you all know what that means. What that means is... That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 12th, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or if you'd like, if you can remember this, just go to istate.tv uh, slash H025. And you can also find us on iTunes if you search for iState. You should find both of our shows, which are on iState, on, on uh, iTunes right now. And that would be Is Daily, as well as headlines you may have missed. Join us tonight when that we will be on the Liberty Principle Facebook page at uh, somewhere between 9 and 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As Professor Rambo and I talk guns in full auto, we talk a uh, little talked about world news in iWorld. We're going to be talking about Corsica. Might be a new Catalonia emerging there. And in iPrepper, we're going to be talking about what are the best types of bullets that preppers might be should be stocking up on. So as always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.